metal riff and you're about to learn that we're about to go through this that might just remind you of just a few slayer songs you know songs like raining blood angel of death when they do that cool breakdown south of heaven dead skin mask and war ensemble just to name a few so slayer has this really distinct style uh, to their riffs and i thought i'd try to capture that in this riff that i just made up for this video lesson here by the way for my patreon members you guys have the backing tracks and the tabs so make sure you go download those on that note no pun intended puns always intended we're gonna jump right into learning this killer sounds like slayer riff and stay tuned till the end of the video we will have our usual guitar chat there are two parts to this riff here we'll go over them one by one so here's the first half of the riff <laughs> Now what makes this simple is we're playing all these notes in this one little section right here, okay? And the single note riffs, we're only playing those on two strings. So just a lot of back and forth between the A and D strings here. I like to simplify things when it comes to riffs and even leads and anything. Just think of what makes this easy. I want you to adapt that mindset. What makes this riff easy? Whether you're learning somebody else's riff, like you're learning this one now, or you're writing your own riffs or leads. Sometimes I'll even play something that's like, man, I can't really remember what I just played. So I had to kind of break it down like, okay, what makes this easy? And if you have that mindset going into it, I think it would just help uh, because a lot of guitar playing, guys, I mean, you put in the time, right? You got to put in the time and learn and play and practice as much as you possibly can. But a lot of it's also up here. You have a lot more power within you to do things not only on guitar but in your life as well so I want you to adapt that mindset that you can do this okay and I know for some of you this riff is easy okay I, I get that uh, but I'm really just talking to all of you just adapt that mindset what makes this easy what makes this simple and then simplify it in your mind didn't mean to go on that tangent there but hey you guys are used to this for me and hopefully it's why part of why you watch my channel so thank you for that all right Let's break this down. We're in standard tuning, okay? We're gonna play the E power chord first. Then we're gonna head over to the A and D strings. This is where the single note pattern starts. Now, what we're doing, and this is kind of what makes it sound like Schleyer, is there's a lot of chromatic type or chromatic style notes here, meaning you're just going from one note to the next, right? You're playing like these half notes, if you will. So that kind of gives it that Schleyer vibe. We're gonna start out on the A string, seventh fret. We're gonna go seven, eight, then over to the D string, seven, okay? Then we're just gonna follow that back, okay? After the D string, go back to the A string, eight, seven. Then we're gonna go down to the sixth fret, okay? Like this. That's that chromatic part that I was telling you about, okay? Now, when we land on that sixth fret, we're gonna do the exact same thing. We're gonna play the exact same thing. So here's another piece of the riff where you can say, hey, this is what makes it easy, okay? Exact same thing, just one, you know, not even a whole step, just a half step up, okay? Okay, so again, let's go through that real quick here, okay? A string, we're gonna be on seven, eight, D string seven, back to A string, eight, seven, then six. Now we're gonna start that pattern over again, but where we're at on the sixth fret, we're gonna start from that part, okay? Now A string, six, seven, D string, six, then back, and then we'll land on the fifth fret. That's pretty much it for the first half of this riff. Let's play it one more time. 
now let's go over the second half of this Sounds Like Slayer riff here and talk about what makes this riff easy. Well, this second half makes it extremely easy because once you know the first half down well, we're just going to replicate that and we're going to make one little change towards the end. And actually, we're going to we're going to get rid of some notes there. We're going to end on a power chord, an F power chord to be exact. So here's how the second half goes. <laughs> A string, frets 7, 8, D string 7, then we go back to the A string and just reverse that, back to the A string, 8, 7, then we go to 6, and we kind of just do that same pattern over again, that would be A string 6, 7, D string 6, then when we get back to the A string, we're going to go 7, 6, and that's when we cut the riff off. At that point is when I hit the open E string. Then we go to that F power chord. So again. A little trick here, and it's not really a trick, but it's just one of those things that makes things a little bit easier. I, I like the path of least resistance when it comes to guitar playing because it just seems to work a little better. Uh, the reason I like that, well, we'll talk about that in our guitar chat. We're getting to that. So what I'm doing here is, is right after that sixth fret of the A string, I go open E. Well, from that open E to the F power chord, that's a lot easier. So in other words, I'm playing in this area right here, but I'm going to go to this power chord this way down here. That's kind of a ways to travel if you think about it, right? So playing that open E gives me a little bit more time to go from here to hear. And this is something to think about when you're writing riffs. Remember, not everything has to be super hard to play and complex. It just needs to sound good, first of all, to you, because that's the most important thing. And look, some parts of your riff may be complicated, some may not be complicated. It really doesn't matter, to be honest with you guys. It really does not matter. What matters is the song. And sure, we want some riffs that are kind of difficult to play because they're fun to play, they're challenging, and they do sound good. But in a lot of cases, I'll find the, the easy way out, kind of like Robert Tepper's song from Rocky IV, There's No Easy Way Out. Really cool tune, by the way, one of my favorites. Um, but I like to take that easy way out because it makes the riff make more sense. Hopefully that makes sense. Let's go through the entire riff one more time, then we'll have our guitar chat. It is time for our guitar chat, guys, but real quick, if you do not have my free practice guide, Metal Riffs and Licks, grab a copy of that. There's a link in the description of this video. If you already have that, and that has helped literally thousands of metal guitar players, by the way, but if you have that, I also have guitar courses like my Metal Riff Master Heavy Metal Rhythm course. I also have a beginner's course called Metal Guitar Apprentice if you're just starting out or need to revisit the basics. Links to all that good stuff is in the description of this video. If you remember, I mentioned in the beginning of the lesson, I wanted you to just simplify things about riffs, not only the riffs that you're learning like this lesson here, but also the riffs that you're writing. And guys, spend more time writing your own riffs than trying to learn something else. I love the fact that you learn my riffs. I appreciate that. I put them out there for that reason, but I don't want you to stop there. Don't stop there. I want you to expand on that. What else can you do with that? What are some other notes or some other ways you can play it? Chances are, if you mess around with that enough, you're going to come up with something much cooler than what I shared with you in this lesson here because it's going to be yours and it's going to be something that you created just based off of one of my ideas. That is my intent for all of my lessons and for this channel. I want you to create your own unique style and sound. Develop that, okay, because you have it in you. Expand on this riff. But going back to simplifying the riff, Look for the easiest part about that riff. What's easy about this? And I want you to approach, well, a lot of things in life, right? When you hit challenges, first and foremost, just take a step back and say, 
you know what, what's easy about this situation? Okay, what, what can I just quickly get down about this situation? Once you do that, you accomplish that one little thing there, right? That part this easy, that gives you more confidence to keep pushing and keep going to that next part that's maybe not so easy, but you tackle that too. And your confidence will just build and build and build. You see, I believe that motivation, things like motivation and confidence, they come through one thing and that's action. That's taking that first step. So sometimes we want to take that first step, but we look at the big picture. It could be this riff over here. And I know this riff wasn't ultra complicated, guys. And remember, I talked about that. You don't have to always have a super complicated riff. It's more about the song, right? Uh, but when you have this section of music that you're trying to learn, whether it be a guitar solo or a rhythm or riff or whatever it may be, look for what's easy within that and then go for that first and again you can build on that you'll probably find that the rest of the riff or the lead or whatever you're learning isn't as complicated as you made it out to be in the beginning because you look for what's easy it's like you know what i can do that that part's simple let me do that next thing you know you're doing the next part the next part the next part so i just want you to think about adapting that mindset when you go into especially writing your own riffs and hey apply that to some other things in life as well you know not everything is as complex as you may think actually most things aren't and i want to give you that confidence and i want to encourage you that guys you really can do what you want to do with your life with your music you've got it within you develop your own style though okay develop your own way of doing that and i think that's very very important so guys i hope this lesson helped you don't forget the links in the description of this video my free practice guide metal riffs and licks i've got my guitar courses my book and of course my music's in the links as well so do check those out that really helps support me and thank you so much guys for watching my videos until the next video you know what to do keep it metal